long day, but um, just just ran out of steam on the mound again, and that, that was cost of money. Yeah, you know, we had a, I think within one out there, one pitch of 10 running that thing, and wind up having to spend so much pitching, you know. Thankful to get that win last night, win a series, but I, I think it just took a lot out, and we really need some distance. I thought Herbert Holtz was fine. He really was an 0-2 count, <laughs> two outs, and really could have got out of there with one run, because he was you know, on up there in pitches for how we pitched him this year. Didn't happen. Uh, credit, credit our opponent. They absolutely tied the game, um, and then we needed some distance, probably out of Dylan Watts, and just didn't didn't think that we were going to get that today. So, run through it. I really like uh, uh, Griffin Graves there at the end. It was good to get him some experience and got to face some lefties and coming there throwing enough strikes and and uh, did he strike out the sides there? Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that's another step for the future there, but. When we played better offense. I told the guys at the end, you know, this was a this was a huge learning year. Uh, so learn and don't repeat, but it's a learn and a grow and coming up with a plan. And you know, our program should have a chip on its shoulder moving forward. And I, I, I'm calling that healthy. I'm calling that a good thing to get focused for making the summer count till we get back together in the fall because this program, with the challenges we had this year, this program continued to grow. I mean, again, I think, I don't know if it was tonight or recently, again, that's three years in a row where we've continued to have more people ever at Plainsman Park, and it happened again this year in a challenging year. So again, I thank our fans for that. Um, this construction, these up, upgrades to Plainsman Park is going to be amazing when we roll back out here in February. we got a top 10 class. Uh, I'll meet with all the players the next couple of days, and that'll shift out the draft and who's coming back. and and the next steps for everyone will start shaking out. We'll start rebuilding uh, this team getting into the fall with so many positive things outside of what's right on the field. Um, those injuries in the middle of the year, their offense was really hurtful. Um, but I, I think we all know the biggest challenge that, that we had this year was uh, being able to settle <clears throat> ball games on the mound. And this whole sport is built around that. And when we can do that and stay healthy, uh, we're good, or anybody, when they uh, uh, when they're not healthy and you're not able to to take care of the the mound and find peace there, and be able to uh, to do some things. I think confidence there, I think settling games there, um, really is the first step before you get into sequencing and et cetera, et cetera. So that was our biggest challenge, and it continued to be one all the way up to this last ball game. Nonetheless, uh, it's learn, grow, and you know, I have to figure out the solutions on what I can do to help in, in that area that uh, I spent a lot of time in my career doing. Um, but there's so many positives to our to our program that uh, I'm, I'm excited to to get to work. I've been thinking for a few weeks of what the next steps are for for all of us. So thank you guys for what you do, and, and thank our fans, and um, I thank these players for. I, I thought they absolutely didn't mail it in. I thought they kept trying to compete and play good baseball to the end. I thought they found themselves a little bit late and still had our challenges, but, but nonetheless, less, I thought their heart was in the right place to try to finish the season the best they could. Uh, I guess just, you know, you talk about pitching and you talk about a year of learning. I mean, uh, what do you feel like you and your staff learned as, as you guys tried to, to navigate the process of, of kind of getting things right on the mound? And I mean, what do you feel like you learned from this season that you can apply whether it's next year or down the line, as far as you know, getting getting your pitchers and getting your staff kind of in the right place. Character prevails. You know, like a Tanner Bowman wound up doing a nice job down the stretch when we moved him to the rotation, and thought he did good. Best outing for him and Alsop was right here at the end. Uh, Alsop's last four outings were, were to absolutely get it done, just like it did. Um, you know, I, I thought with Alsop and, and Gonzalez, I, I really we. Uh, <clears throat> we hung our hat on that, and that didn't exactly materialize for us. That was a one and two, and I think most clubs that are doing good had that one and two for the whole year. So that, that was the biggest challenge uh, for us this year. Um, NIL, that space, uh, uh, whether I hit the mark or fell short on that of the estimation there, um, trying to find a, a commitment there that matches our peers in our league. We finished fifth in this league the last two years, and I just thought, once we got to a certain level of depth in our pitching staff, there's a watermark or a level of um, acceptability in our league. And I thought we threw too many innings uh, beneath that from a, from a talent standpoint. So 
a huge commitment to see what we, we would, like I said, when you start talking about it, you got a, a, a top ranked class, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, depending on all the different publications out there, which ones of those can we get to school? You know, we're excited about like a Tilly, Cam Tilly and what he can do and some young guys. And this is a special class and it's special because the arms that are young, but you also know the experience is a huge piece. So, you know, what does the portal present? And I think we're pretty attractive because we're playing the Southeastern Conference and I look at, you know, trying to take a trip to the Dominican with the ball club over Thanksgiving this year. And we play a, a series in Arlington, Texas, back in the dome there in February. Uh, in addition to those 10 SEC weekends coming up, we'll be in a new format, you know, uh, with our conference with two teams being added, uh, and there's huge opportunity. So uh, we're hopeful that, you know, once we get to the 1st of June that we have our ducks in a row now that that's our silo singular focus is on this roster that we can put all our attention to that and uh, see if we can attract some guys that can help us get ready quick. Maybe that's an advantage of of, of being able to do the portal and uh, being aggressive. So we'll be out uh, trying to trying to get people interested in, in supporting and giving at a higher rate than what we presented with this team. And we'll be out trying to look and, and, and find some guys that want real opportunity in the best amateur baseball on earth. I guess following up on that, you've kind of answered this, but does that mean use those NIL payments to, uh, not payments, but like NIL dollars to kind of finance or that maybe aren't on this roster right now? Is that Connor Gatwood at the transfer portal? Is that staff change? Is kind of how, how, how do you look at that? All of it. And that's what we have to sift through. And that's where we have a head start. Remember the draft's not till the middle of July. So there is a little bit of time. Um, I've asked, you know, Coach Nunnemaker is our recruiting coordinator. I asked him to just, all of our guys that we've been fighting through this season to try to go day to day over the next, two or three weeks, you know, we're used to playing and some of the challenges are going to, uh, not a challenge, it's a blessing when you, you play long in the postseason or go to Omaha. Those are always, you're recruiting when you're in Omaha and it's hard when you're a um, thousand miles away. So uh, that's why I say singular focus. We can get right on this and all of these guys that I haven't seen in the last two or three weeks because I've made a few trips uh, recruiting, we'll try to go get in homes of all our people because we hadn't really seen them all spring. So. All these guys that we want to, can't wait to get in our program that we already have committed, trying to sift through that um, and, 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 and see where they're at. You know, they have representation and um, we'll be diving into every bit of that. But honestly, probably some of that's already started and we're setting a calendar because, you know, I think it's important for me to go connect with those people because now I have the time, why would I not? Which, what is it, 30, I mean, 30 years, 30? years plus for you how how uncomfortable is is this process now because there's so much unknown it's always been unknown in college baseball recruiting but yeah. you've added all these things in how uncomfortable is it because there's so much unknown yeah and you're seeing it in programs you know the up, up, ups and downs and the sideways uh, it's just um, you're trying to hit you just don't feel like you have as much control as you used to on things so uh, as things continue to change and shift, you're, you're forecasting. And, you know, we talked probably last year, you and I, or whatever, you're not on a five-year plan, you're on a one-by-year plan, and there's some adjustments that we have to make for sure. And I think we will. We've already started conversations of what that looks like. Uh, so uh, we're doing that and try to set it for this cycle. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, you hear so much out on the street. <laughs> that uh, what is this gonna look like next year? Will it get buttoned up? And it seems like there's more more hope now um, than there has been in the past. But I think we do have another cycle where we have to, whatever these adjustments are, that, that we have to make them now to, to get this roster, you know, in a better place and in, in, in a good good working shape heading into the fall. Good. All right.